Hello. Hi. In prior segments, we dealt with Luke 18, verse 8, where Christ asked the question, When the Son of Man comes or returns, will he find the faith on the earth? And we related it in the last segment to Luke 17, starting at verse 20, where Christ is says something very challenging to the Jews of his day and his own disciples, which is the kingdom of God is in your midst or among you. That's the prior context of the story with which we started. That is of the woman who will not let the judge alone, the unrighteous judge. She she belabors him until he responds to her requests. So mm -hmm. we noted her determination, her desperation Persevere. to persevere in prayer until she got what she was looking for. Right. And Christ is making that point when he says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find the faith or this faith on that, the earth? That kind of faith among people. Yeah. Now we want to relate that story and that question to what follows. And what follows is the story of the two men who went up to the temple. Mm -hmm. right. Which was very important to us when we left the watchtower in re-examining what it was that God required. Mm -hmm. Right. And at that time, when we left the Watchtower and in the five years that followed that from around 1988 to 1993, we organized demonstrations at Toronto Sky Dome. If you've ever seen a, a photograph or a film of Toronto or visited Toronto, you know this: the CN Tower is the monument of the downtown that used to be the tallest freestanding structure in the world. And at the base of it, if you look at a picture, it's this, this immense dome which was when it was built in 1988 called the Sky Dome and was renamed later the Rogers Center and it still has that name today. And that's where the Watchtower would have their conventions during those years that we were leaving the tower. And at, at several of them we organized demonstrations where we had sometimes two or three dozen people demonstrating with signs and handouts and mm -hmm. uh, there's, here's one of the signs we used. Max, can you read it for us? A little lower? Which are you, the Pharisee or tax collector? Good. So this was one and of our signs. From Luke 18, verses 10 to 14. Right. And we so wanted to read that segment of Luke to yeah. follow up the question, when, when the Son of Man returns, will he find the, the faith or this faith? Right. Now that particular passage was very important to me, I would call it maybe a shift verse or a shift passage for me. Uh, during the time when David had left already and I was still clinging to the watchtower trying to make sense of things, we went through a period of time where discussion was, was pretty difficult <laughs> to have with each other because it was too volatile. But there were a few things, three things that really helped me get past and and get to the point where I could leave the watchtower. Uh, one was the suggestion that David made, and I've talked about this in one of the previous videos, um, when I'm the ones that give my testimony. He suggested that when I went to the convention, I should notice who they talk about. Who do they talk about? He said, M more themselves or Jehovah or Jesus. And I went away in a fury and did that tally. <laughs> and then the second thing that he suggested I do was to read the book of Acts and look particularly at the preaching of the apostles, all the, the, the preaching to the public. And what did they talk about? Is it the same as we talk about as Jehovah's Witnesses? So I took that challenge, didn't think it would be a problem. Those two things were good because I could do them on my own. Mm. We didn't have to talk about them, and he didn't have to see my reaction immediately uh, to doing those things. But the third one was at some point we sat down and read the story of the two that go up and pray at the temple. So we thought we should read that together because uh, it connects with, you know, the faith. Will he find faith? And and then I'll tell you my reaction after reading it. The question that 
was setting up our reading of it back then was which one of these two men is the Jehovah's Witness. Right, yes. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, so. Luke 18, verse 9. But he spoke this illustration. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. But he spoke this illustration also to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and who considered the rest as nothing. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and began to pray these things to himself. O oh God, I thank you I am not as the rest of men, extortioners, unrighteous, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give the tenth of all things I acquire. But the tax collector, standing at a distance, was not willing even to raise his eyes heavenward, but kept beating his breast and saying, O oh God, be gracious to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home this man went down to his home proved more righteous than that man because everyone that exalts himself will be humiliated but he that humbles himself will be exalted so for me I, the time when we read it together I actually even broke down I believe I started crying because I could immediately see I was the, the Pharisee and I would say most Jehovah's Witnesses are Pharisees mm -hmm. because we would be thinking about everyone that was not a Jehovah's Witness is out they're gonna die in Armageddon they're no good we already had preconceived ideas about anybody even who was religious mm -hmm. as not really taking it seriously or whatever and we we boasted about what we were doing that other people aren't doing. Right. We do the preaching work. We use God's name. We, you know, we go to meetings. I could see myself in this picture. And who is the tax gatherer? Well, this man's not just a common Jewish worshiper. He's the worst of the worst from a Jewish point of view. Right. That's why he says, I am not like this tax gatherer. Yeah. Well, anyone can compare himself to the worst of the worst and come off looking really good. Right. And yeah. tax gatherer from a Jewish point of view was not only a bad Jew, he was the ultimate renegade Jew. He was an apostate. Yeah. He was a man who had deliberately gone over to the other side, the Roman side. Yeah. Right. So this habit we have of Jehovah's Witnesses is comparing ourselves with others mm -hmm. is insidious because Jesus doesn't argue with this man's claims. Yeah, he doesn't his say good he claims doesn't and his do negative that. claims. Yeah, he doesn't say he doesn't do all these things that he's bragging about. But he I, does say that yeah. the, of the two men, when they went away, one was justified. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this is where the translations are different. Yours says? Mine uh, had said um, he proved more righteous than that man. There's that exercising... <laughs> exercising or exercising faith that that kind of idea that is planted in your head when you right. read the new world translation yeah he proved i.e he went away and did stuff that was good uh you're kind of left guessing yeah but it says in other translations this man went down to his house justified which means not proved righteous i.e he, he went out and did something right he was declared righteous i.e at, at that time he got out of court and was not any mm -hmm. any more under a charge yeah. he was not guilty in the eyes of the law yeah that's what this word justified means yeah in in christian terminology and in the bible so if he's justified and that leaves the other man unjustified what's the difference yeah well the one it even says in the new world translation he was praying to himself these <laughs> things so i think that's pretty telling as well because when when you do brag you know, you're talking to yourself. God knows the real you. <laughs> you know, he's he's not fooled by this. The the man who is the doesn't even want to look up heavenward. He knows himself. Mm -hmm. He's self-aware. 
and he realizes that he has no claim on God. Yeah. He, he has to throw himself at the mercy of God. I'm reminded of a famous hymn that we sing, at least in the church we sing it, which, which has the line, Nothing in my hands I bring, mm -hmm. only to your cross I cling. Mm -hmm. the, the whole idea being what you offer to God, this man is offering something to God, he, God doesn't argue with that, but mm -hmm. his heart attitude is comparing himself with other people. Right. And, yeah. and we knew as Jehovah's Witnesses that's habitually what we do. Right. Is that our claim before God? Or is our claim more like this man who can't even look up mm -hmm. and beats his breast in his vehemence? So this is where he does remind me of the lady in the prior illustration who will, will not let the issue alone until she gets the answer. Yeah. The amount of intensity she brings, the perseverance she brings to prayer Till she has an answer, this man obviously has that kind of desperation too. Yeah. And I think it helped me to understand why Christians emphasize grace. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're talking to Christians and they talk about grace, as a Jehovah's Witness you think, oh, they're just trying to get off doing nothing. You know, <laughs> this is an excuse. No, it isn't. For a Christian to talk about grace is, is because of that self-awareness. I don't deserve anything. I have no claims on God. I throw myself at His mercy, and it's through grace that I receive the gift of of life. So, do we measure ourselves by the distance between our righteousness and other men's righteousness, or do we measure ourselves by God, by yeah. Christ? Yeah, God's standards versus mm. human standard, our standard. So, going back to the uh, the question of eighteen eight. Mm -hmm. Will the Son of Man find this faith on the earth, the faith that generates this kind of humility, this mm -hmm. kind of desperation, yeah. calling out to God, like Paul says in Romans chapter 10, those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And it, I believe the word call has, imports into it this kind of direct relationship. Yeah, that is humility. The, that precludes all other considerations of righteousness. This man is declared righteous. He is not righteous in himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. This passage. This man knew where he stood. Yes. This, so this passage crushed me when I realized that, that I was in the wrong position here. You were in the wrong category. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Two types of religion. One self self aware. Yeah, just for it to be be brought to focus for me. Yeah. I, I, I suddenly realized that I was more like the Pharisee than the tax collector. So there's the question we leave hanging at the end of this one, another question. Will he find this faith on the earth? Is the mm -hmm. how are we personally justified before God? How are we declared righteous before God? Is the question we have to keep ask, asking ourselves. Mm -hmm.